This classic episode of the Electric Playground is brought to you by PNP Games, your source for everything video games. Support the partners that support Electric Playground. Remember, this episode first aired in 1997. There's nothing worse than having fighting feature in your game and see Pavel Bure drop the gloves. It just makes me want to cry. It's pretty much freeform. You can do whatever you want. And that's, that's a lot of the fun of the game, just jumping in the air and flying around, twisting around and twirling. Things you could never do in a real car, you'd be dead. Into Tomb Raider Room. This is where Neil and Heather, who are working on all the games and all the levels and all the design, uh, create the environment, create the textures. Hi, I'm Tommy Tellerico. I've been writing music for video games for over seven years now, and I gotta tell you, it is one of the coolest industries on the entire planet. Now we're gonna take you inside the world of video games, like no one else has ever done before. Now throw in weekly reviews of the hottest new games, and you got what we call the Electric Playground. Radical Entertainment is the largest independent software developer in the whole world. They employ over 200 people in both San Francisco and Vancouver. Now we faced off with them to see how they scored on their latest hockey game. UP's in Vancouver and we're on the ice with Ferdy Esposito, Radical's producer of NHL Power Play 98. How are you doing there, man? I just got scored on. You got the Canucks, you got the new uniforms, you're in the uh, in the uh, General Motors place there. And That's right. What are some of the improvements to this year's Rev uh, over last year's game? Um, we've got quite a few things. We have uh, the choice of five different camera views. Last year the 2D game had only one single view. We have five due to the nature of the 3D environment. Right. Um, we have fights. I studied all the fighters, kept track from day one of everybody who fought everybody in the league, so we'd have the more realistic matchups and the right people fighting. There's nothing worse than having fighting feature in your game and see Pavel Bure drop the gloves. It just makes me want to cry. So make sure the right guys go. We've got uh, new sound announcements. Vancouver penalty to number 16. Two minutes more charging. We've got updated teams, rosters, logos. We have create and, and trade player. Yeah. So now I can take Messier off the Rangers and put him on the line with the Canucks. Where and the he neat, should be. Yeah, and, and the neat thing about this game is as soon as I trade Messier, the logic within this game will reshuffle the lineup. And guess what? Messier is on the number one line. So I think we got Mark Messier on computer animations here. The Moose and I, we go to the same barber. We use a motion capture technique, which uh, gives you a very real look to the game. When you employ pro people to be doing the motion and stuff, is that you get a real hockey game. You know, when you play with the Canucks against, uh, you know, the Rangers, or something like that, you actually get a feel for the players and the skating similar in styles. And I do a lot of the. Uh finer details like uh, team uniforms, scoreboards, overlays, crowds, a little bit of the NIS uh, screens. Uh, I like helping out my pal Justin there with uh, some of the stats. What are NIS screens? Non-interactive screens, anything that you're not actually playing the game but you're setting up the okay. game to go into where you're picking what teams you want to play. So that there's a lot of textures going into these guys, right? A lot more than we had last year. And um, it's just a balancing act now, trying to keep, keep your poly count high and your textures looking good. You can get right in tight, you know, right in it on guys. So if you can get in on any section, you sort of have to be able to show high resolution, all of it, you know? I mean, it'd be nice because I think we could, you know, we could play around and get better frame rate and on and on and on if we, if we did drop polys, but we don't. You know, it, it's set to go at a frame rate that sticks and look good from any angle. Um, 
so that you can zoom around the camera while the game's playing. Like that would be, uh, you know, kind of a neat thing. And that's the thing with uh, that kind of medium is that pretty much you get to set up the scene yourself, the lights, the cameras, pretty much the whole action. You're like, yeah, you're the directors, and then um, you do this whole thing yourself, which is kind of fun, yeah. What's it like uh, developing a game for three different platforms and trying to deal with that? The good thing that we did was we designed it in such a way that we were able to port a lot of the global code. So, right. the, so a lot of the code that you see here, the camera logic, the AI logic, the, uh, the physics, the collision of the puck and the player, the, the, the stat simulation, the edit, the line screen, all, those, all that logic can be ported over. Okay. So one guy basically does the work for the three skew. Which one do you like to play the most? I, I like playing the 3D game. Um, on the PC? On the PC. Yeah. I think we did a really good job. I think what, what's nice about it is it really takes advantage of the Saturn. Like the, the Saturn, um, it, I guess it's harder to program for, but the, the graphics are really nice when you do it right. And uh, it's got a really sweet frame rate. It's, uh, it's just like watching TV. I'm a, I'm a gamer before I'm a designer, and I knew where we came up short but I also knew the potential that was there, and I feel just great about this game. Really excited to see it on the shelf. I hope it gets out there to the people, because it's, to us, it's hockey, and uh, it's a lot of fun to play. Pack your bags. EP's going on a hunt for Laura Croft. tower you got from b, b Games. You know it. The Gamer Broccoli. Sexy or sexist? Uh, I have to go with sexy, judging by the uh, picture of the lady. Yeah, very sexy. I think she's sexy. She's sexy. Do you see this woman as sexy or sexist? Probably sexist. I see her as tough. Oh, I think she's sexy. She's silicon. I mean, come on, she's not real. Her breasts are too large. Is she sexy or she's sexy? So sexy. She's voluptuous. She's like, good curves. She's kicking it. <laughs> Martial arts background, yes. She's got the thighs for it. Absolutely, 100% sexy. Sex sales. Your opinion? I go sexy. Oh, it's a game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's got a gun, too. Yeah, I play it. Since their mega hit Tomb Raider, IDOS has been a company on the move. So much so, we had to track down their big wigs from San Francisco to Atlanta, even as far as London, England. Now, let me tell you, they had a lot of stuff to show us. Laura's actually become representative of gaming, and right. we're pretty excited about that. If you look at the articles, like the Face article, or the Time Magazine spread that she was in, yeah. or when you see her on the YouTube Pop Tour as being representative of pop right. culture, yeah. you see that she really is the only identifiable character in gaming that's not controlled by a platform. So what are, what's coming up for IDOS for this Christmas? For this Christmas, we've got... Tomb Raider 2, of course. Tomb Raider 2. We're really excited about that. It looks fantastic. We're here to talk about Tomb Raider 2. The guys are working really hard, and it's all come together really well. We're really pleased. Well, I couldn't believe that a team of nine people made a game so rich and complex. Is, is, this, is it the same size? It's exactly the same. The team's a little bit bigger this time than uh, the first time around, which is a bit bizarre. Um, we've got about 80% of the original team, and we've got some new blood on it, which have been brilliant. They've brought a lot of really new and exciting ideas. We basically reworked everything. We didn't just want to produce a, uh, a sequel, which was just perceived to be a system disc. So we've changed the locations dramatically. Uh, we've given the perception that you can go outside. We improved the engine by uh, generally about 50%. So there's a, there's a vast speed improvement. It means we can have uh, more textures, richer textures, more polygons, larger rooms, more effects. She's got a whole new range of new animations. Uh, the animation's really linked to the location, so things like climbing means that we can dramatically change the puzzle elements in the levels where she'll be able to scale walls. Um, the story has changed. We've got a great story this time around again. We get the initial idea of what the story's going to be about, and then we come to these guys and they work on that and produce the pictures using 3D Studio Max. So here, Peter can just flick through various frames. Uh, each frame features the wireframe of a Jeep hitting a tree. It's obviously lost control somewhere. And 
It's going to crash out here. We'll probably uh, on the screen have a little sneak preview from the wireframe that's seen on the screen there. The next stage is to, to render that sequence up and then to have a look at that scene uh, fully rendered. We can just flick over here and just have another quick look at it, rendered up, see the difference, how it looks. This tells the story of the, the dagger, which is the artifact which uh, hopefully eventually, if you're successful in the game, you should be able to get to. Here you've seen the pictures and also hearing the sounds. Basically, you see how we can build up thousands of sounds. Just by the flick of a switch. I'm certainly going to kick Tommy Tallarico's ass. In the Tomb Raider room, this is where Neil and Heather, who are working on all the games and all the levels and all the design, uh, create the environment, create the textures, set them all up, and you can just click onto a room and go straight to that room put the lights in so they can see how the room will be lit. The little light bulbs are obviously the lights in the room, so Neil could probably click on one of those, just lighten it or darken it, and you can see how it affects the room that it's in, how the shadows start to work. So this really is a tool where to, to use your design and to build up the uh, locations for Tomb Raider 2. Here we see Lara as she exists in our eyes in the company as a wireframe model. Oh, do you think you needed the live version of Lara Croft to get people's attention for the game? I think that would probably help a little bit. The morale level might rise a little bit. This is EP. Do you want the full power of Windows 95? Would you like to learn secrets for Windows 95 that you can't find anywhere else? Then you need the hottest secrets for Windows 95 videos. Order today and you'll receive this free quick reference guide that lets you take your Windows 95 secrets anywhere. You'll also get Juno, the country's first free internet email service. This package is only available through this exclusive TV offer. Order hottest secrets for Windows 95 today and you'll get all this for just $79.95. Call now, 1-800-940-MIND. the streets of San Francisco trying to catch up with Vic, who's trying to catch up with the Nintendo 64 San Francisco Rush Team. Yeah. Hey, if you don't like my driving, stay off the sidewalk. Yeah. Come on, take a look at San Francisco Rush Extreme Racing. There are three levels of tracks, so you can go from beginner to extreme, and then there are four levels of cars. We took the, uh, originally the maps, the true maps of San Francisco, we looked at, at what that would give us in terms of a game. We said going 150, 160 miles an hour takes you a long time to get from one end of San Francisco to the other. So we engineered, crafted really, a better San Francisco to race through. If you're driving the extreme car, then you're in full simulation mode and basically you're on your own. You're driving a real car through the city at 150, which is not an easy thing to do. How many polygons a second are we talking in this game? A lot of that is proprietary. <laughs> we won't talk about that then. Um, but we, we did manage to get all the scenery that you see there at a very good frame rate, uh, as you were noting before. Um, it does use a 3DFX uh, Voodoo Graphics chipset, so if you wanted to look up the specs for that, uh, but then we have proprietary architecture around that. What I did was uh, mostly texture mapping and a little bit of modeling. You show me what Market Street looks like from above, uh, where all the trees are, you know, where the buses go, where the tracks are, things like that. These are pictures of the Haight-Ashbury District. And these show not just where the stores are and things like that, but they show what the street looks like when you're looking down the street from a driver's perspective. I take those pictures, I scan them in, and I make these, which are texture maps. Uh, we have uh, Chinatown textures, you know, all these different signs from Chinatown. And then I take the textures and then model a street. So, for example, this is Grant Street in Chinatown. Um, this is actually one of our better known shortcuts. But that's just the flat shade of polygons. And with lines, and those are just the uh, edges. We're here on the set of San Francisco Rush, and this behind me happens to be one of the most elaborate 3D models ever constructed for a video game. I'm here with Ed Logg, who's been with Atari Games for 18 years. So what are you working on today, Ed? I'm working on San Francisco Rush for the Nintendo 64. It's uh, currently about 60% done, and you can see it here in the Nintendo booth. Three, two. Uh, so, what did you do in San Francisco Rush? Oh, I'm slave driver. 
making sure everybody hits their milestones and everything. No, just going around saying, you know, have you checked on this? Did you do that? You know, I need it Friday. So how is it working with, uh, with the 3D technology, the Nintendo 64, as opposed to the, the freedom that you had with the arcade game? Um, well, it's a lot more limiting, but I kind of like the, the control of, of less. You know, yeah. less, less is more, actually. Um, I think the coin up. You know, they'll just add another chip or more RAM or something like that when things start going over while we're really confined to, to keeping within this frame. I think, it, I think every game person should start out and consumer and then move up the scale, so to speak, so you have a solid foundation. Well, as far as code, we've added a lot of uh, special modes and special Easter eggs. We added three full tracks just with as much depth um, as the arcade, uh, shortcuts, uh, jumps, um, there's areas where you can just play around, there's a, there's a skateboard park. It's pretty much free form, you can do whatever you want, and that's, that's a lot of the fun of the game, just jumping in the air and flying around and twisting around and twirling. Things you could never do in a real car, you'd be dead. Well, there's a secret area that you can get to, and this special code, YYCCC. Up, 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 down, 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 Y, Y, down, down, up, Y, Y, C, 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 up, up. You can just go in, fool around a little theme park with walls <laughs> that you can drive on. Coming up after this, we review four PlayStation hockey games. Hey, you missed the spot. Hey, I'm Lee from PMP Games, and we're honored to bring you classic episodes of the Electric Playground every Saturday morning. Visit us on our web store at pmpgamesonline.com, or if you're in Winnipeg, at one of our three retail locations at 915 McLeod, 2609 Portage, and 160 Meadowood Drive. We're going to play forever. Now, back to the show. As you can see, certain people on the internet and on heat form an attachment. And uh, it was never my intent to sort of rise to any sort of celebrity, but it seems to have happened. And uh, I don't want the main reason I'm here, which is to build this network, to be obscured by any sort of uh, fame seeking or anything of that nature. You're doing this purely for the good of man. That is correct. And we want to make a little money. talk about uh, Face Off 98. NHL Face Off. My personal favorite. All right, that's from Sony. Yep. Uh, the game's great. It's uh, got very, very slick graphics. The the uh, motion capture is amazing. Yeah. It's got an intensely slick rendered ice surface, so there's all kinds of reflection. Yeah. Everything moves really, really fast, almost too fast at times. You could slow that down, though. You got yeah. the game speed option, which you can down, One so very cool, cool feature is the game speed option, so you can slow it down if you want to. You can speed it up if you want to. If you only have five minutes to, do, to finish a game, jack it up to 100 and you're rocking. <laughs> um, for my kind of hockey style, it's it's very action-based and very fast-paced, and that's the kind of hockey game I like. I'd give it a 9, 9 out of 10. Gotcha. Well, I'll tell you what. NHL Faceoff 98 is probably the best hockey game I've ever played on any system ever. The ice looks real. The, uh, there's real-time lighting effects, there's yeah, reflection on the ice, yeah. you, you smack a guy up against the boards and the boards are shaking, the yeah. sound is, uh, I mean, okay. <laughs> I did the sound, so uh, it's it's the best sounding hockey game I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> oh, man. There's skinning, yeah. also. Here's, you're gonna hear this word a lot. It's the new buzzword in the industry, skinning, which means that they actually take, you know, you, you can actually, like, people's skin or jerseys, you know, when they go for a shot, the stuff actually, like, moves. Stretches. Yeah, there's, like, a skeleton underneath yeah. underneath the thing, and it, it's, it's... Two it's really problems cool. I had with it, though. The sticks are too thin. I found the sticks too thin, and the there's too much room behind the, the crease, behind the goalie's net. But, you know, those are minor. Those, Very minor points. Are minor. Okay. So what would you give the game? Oh, I definitely 9.7. I thought it was wow. one, of the, one of the best hockey games. Wow, you uh, loved it. 
Yeah. Okay, what about yeah. NHL 98 by EA Sports? NHL 98, now here again, another great hockey game. EA's presentation on hockey is just amazing. Definitely. I mean, in between plays, they show the skaters skating around. They show, it's just like you're watching on TV. Yep. The problem was, though, is that I couldn't quit past any of those. I mean, as great as they get, yep. while you're playing like the 30th game in the season, okay, you've seen this animation. I'm trying to like, you know, quit by it. Can we just play it. here? Exactly, yeah. but, but the, con the control is excellent. Uh, I thought the ice was very, Flat though, there's no reflection, there's yeah. no, the crowd was just like black and white, and okay. but it plays good, it plays fast, it's probably the, you know, the second fastest game out of the four. Play-by-play uh -huh. -play on the announcer yeah. is really cool, yeah. I, I was jealous when I heard that, I'm like, yeah. man, those guys did that really good. Um, so, oh, I did that game in 8.9. Okay, okay, I, I like this one better actually, I like the NHL 98 better. You like this better than Face Off? Well, it's, I, I've been playing the NHL games for years, yeah. and this is the first one that I played on the PlayStation that sort of jacked up my excitement level for playing video game hockey again. Okay. And it's not so much the, uh, the finer points, I think it's the whole grand detail that is in the game. Like it's the, it really got the NHL presentation down pat. It, it really feels like you're watching uh, a television broadcast. Right. And the play-by-play -play blew my mind. I couldn't believe how smooth it was. It was real smooth. Every pass is, is right on the money. I'd give it a 9.5 out of 10. So if you're into bells and whistles, that's the game. Yeah, sports. Gotcha. NHL 98. Uh, NHL Power Play 98. Ah, Power Play 98. Now, now here's a game that a lot of people around the office uh, like the most because it's yeah. more of a simulation they feel. Yeah. Even though it is a little slower, yep. um, I, th I thought the movement was, was better than oh, yeah. NHL 98. Not as good Very as Face smooth. Off, but it's, it's, you know, the, it's not as, as choppy, and that's probably why it's going a little slower, yeah. because you know, they took the time to get all those frames in. Yeah. I give that one an 8.6. Cool. Well, they, uh, they improved on the engine that they built for uh, NHL Power Play 96. The international teams are back, but this time you can create and trade players, which is really important. Yeah. Nice, nice new addition. Yeah. If you're a real hockey enthusiast, you're probably going to find that the guys at Radical know the game and play the game and love the game more than any other hockey development team out there right now. They're they're nuts. They play every morning before they get to work and start designing the game. I'd give NHL Power Play 98 nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Yep. Another nine out of ten. Yep. Okay. Um, how about the uh, breakaway for acclaim? NHL breakaway 98. One thing that really annoyed me about the game was the was the presentation of it. There's way too many bells and whistles and lights and flashing things. It looks like a laser light show. So those should be defaults that you can turn on and turn off. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah. It was uh, it was probably the choppiest uh, of the bunch the uh, as far as frames and stuff. I'd give that a 7.4. 7.4 to yeah. 10. Okay. I thought the Polygon players were the least realistic looking out of all the hockey games. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, it's still very enjoyable. I'd give uh, Breakaway 98 uh, about a 7 out of 10. Cool. All right, well, that about wraps it up for our hockey thing, huh? That's right. Cool, let's get out of here. Let's go play some. Are they going to be mad? That's, uh, that's Messier's stick, man. It's signed and everything. Yeah, he's not going to like that. No. You're always busting stuff. Are you going to take this with you or yeah, what? I'll give him this. You're going to give him this. He probably has one of these. All right. Here's an EP sneak peek at what may be the hottest game of 1998. It features intense 3D graphics without the use of a 3D accelerator card. This is Messiah. See you next week. Same electric time, same electric channel. <laughs>
por resolver solo en el área. Todos los de Atari tienen su propio catre. ¿o? No, 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 yo sabía comprarlo. Mira esos calcetines, <risa> mira esos calcetines. ¿Qué tan viejos son? ¿Desde cuándo están ah, aquí? Yo no haría eso si fuera tú. ¿eh? Oh, lo siento, son desechos tóxicos. Tal vez salgan en el próximo juego de Atari. Adiós, Electric Playground. Hasta luego. This classic episode of the Electric Playground was brought to you by PNP Games, your source for everything video games. Support the partners that support the Electric Playground. Thanks for watching and play forever.